Aloha, everybody. We're here, Dorothy and I are here on Kauai today with a very, very special person. Someone I've known for what, 45 years? Oh, at least. I mean, it's it, eons. We've been oh, together oh, in yes. a lot of times. Dorothy's known her for a long time, too. And our guest is Jan Venturini, who is one of the most magical mystery tours you could ever go on in your life. <laughs> she has it all. She's an uh, incredible friend. She's an incredible counselor. She's an incredible medium. I'm using the word incredible too much, but I don't think I can. She is a tremendous writer, an author, and storyteller, workshop leader. But more than that, she's someone that cares about life and oneness and the teachings. And why I wanted to have her on the show, because I, besides I love her so much and I respect her so much, is because she's lived on Kauai for a long time now. 14 years. 14 years. Mm -hmm. And it's such a different environment here yes, and one is. that's so feeling. And she carries that energy so beautifully with her. And I, I think it was such a gift to have to have her on the show so she can, so you all can experience her <laughs> vibe going on, <laughs> her Lemurian vibe. And uh, how did we meet? Richie Haven, so that's right. In a bathroom in San Francisco. That's right. And I was very nervous because yes. I guess he would remember me. You remember my voice. Yeah. But then the next time we met was at a psychic fair. That's when right. We were doing readings in uh, Santa Cruz. That's right. Right? And and we, we didn't remember the other No, time. but we got together and started talking about Richie Haley. We said, oh, I used to live with his drummer. And I'm like, that's it. Were you in San Francisco? In the bathroom with In me? the bathroom. <laughs> I said, yeah, we went to see Richie. He was performing, and we were there. Over. He was colorizing old black and white movies. Like, yeah, you went in the bathroom and you said, follow me. Well, I was so nervous. And Jan, and I said to Jan, what if he doesn't remember me? Because it was a long time ago. And she said, I'm going to take you. And you took me by the hand and you right. said, I'm going to take you backstage right. and, and everything will be fine. It was yeah. like a totally angelic move on her part because I was so nervous. <laughs> and then we've been great friends ever since then. That was a long time. It was. We've, we've taught together in lots of workshops and done yeah. a lot of readings together and and dorothy's been Dorothy a part of that and, and, yes I, i've been a part of that so Absolutely. we're really three semi-enlightened broads having a yes we are semi-enlightened broad conversation ancient yes we are ancient ancient, semi ancient. ancient semi don't say about ancient okay ancient ancient long into more dimensions than we can count that's right which is a little scary some days <laughs> it is isn't it it's, it is quite interesting that's for sure and I, I, when I wrote to um, Jan with some questions before, you know, our, our discussion here, our, whatever this is, our great meeting, and I said, you know, I, I had our questions. She wrote back the most wonderful thing about, can you say that quote about? Yeah, my history? theme of life and what all of my almost 81 years of reaching out, searching, just meditating brought me to a place where I finally realized that living in the mystery is my total motto. And it freed me from so much, so much quest. We spent our lifetime looking for answers, seeking, seeking, seeking. And I realized one day as I was looking out in my living room, I, my living room looks out on these mountains and valleys that is very vast. And I was looking out like, Mom, what if there was just nothing to master? If I didn't have to master well, anything, I could just be free. Mm -hmm. And and I, and it just hit me: I could be totally free to be in every moment, allowing the mystery to find me, so that light would live well, me, is that great? rather than me trying to figure it all out. And it was just I put this wave of energy just came over me. It was like, whoa. If this is just like, I can be a child, I can play dog, I can do anything I want, which I do have a puppy and I do play dog. And, and I can be a wise woman if I want to be a wise woman. And I just felt in that moment, free to not deal with age, sex, anything. And so living there is, it's very interesting because it's, it's, 
it opens you up to seeing all the leaves on the tree. It, it allows you to feel the breeze caressing your cheek. You just, you savor the moment that's like right now. Even though we talk about those years that we had together, the treasure and the specialness is this moment here, right here, right now. And that everything you'll ever need is right there in presence. Yeah. And we're so connected. Yeah. Every single thing is connected to yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. It, it occurs to me that when you two first met, what a mystery. You know, yes. yeah, yeah. in retrospect. Yes. Yeah. But what you're talking about is recognizing the mystery in the moment. Exactly. Well, I think that's just it's so, so full. Beautiful. Amazing. You know, if we could take our mind out of thinking about the past and wondering about the future, we're so free to experience everything right here, right now, yes. in this moment. Oh my God, that's that's exactly that that so resonates with me. Because when you're in the moment, you're in the mystery of the moment, and in the past and the present, it's it's whatever mysteries they were. Yes, you know, we learn something. Exactly. Oh my God. And we don't even know if there really is a past or a future, truly, because all we have is the present. Well, Einstein said there is no that there time. Everything's happening at once. It's right. Well, you as a hypnotherapy teacher. You know that because you can go back to those lifetimes and heal something and there in the moment. And you're bringing it in the moment. Yeah. You're you're, and it's powerful because when you're in the moment, you have everything available. Yeah. You know what's interesting, I, and I just did this recently, um, yeah. looking at inductions in in my manual. Yes. I, I'm changing all of the inductions to only present tense. That's oh, wonderful. that is so powerful. only present tense. That's terrific. Yeah. That, that that's exactly what you're talking exactly. about. We live in the present tense. Yes, the power of now, right? Yeah. As Eckhart Tolle says. Well, if, well we can't write that book. No. <laughs> no, no, actually, you know, I called it the power of waking up. Because mm-hmm. to me, it was like... That's your. That's Jan's book. Yeah, one time when I was doing a hypnosis training on a person, I was doing hypnotherapy on a person, this little voice came in my little ear and said, well, why don't you wake them up in this tree? You know what? Wake them up in the trance. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. and it doesn't mean not going to trance. It was bring them back to the moment. Mm-hmm. Bring them into the now. Bring it here. Mm-hmm. Don't let them get away from here. Exactly. This moment mm-hmm. now. And I and it and the thing is, we can sit here and wonder and worry about five thousand things in the future. If we listen to the news and look at the world at large. We could have tons of things to be concerned about. But if you sit in the now then your energy moves out and you can do so yeah. much more yeah. to heal the planet by being that's present. That's really good. That's really good, Jim. I mean, it just yeah. works for me. This is why I wear that. This to me represents who we really are. Mm-hmm. Every turn is a different angle of us. It's all the facets. It's all the facets of who we are, who we are. and all the multicolored ethereal being because mm-hmm. there is really no death. A body might pass mm-hmm. away. We're each so eternal mm-hmm. that there's, you know, the other thing that I've learned is that fear is just an idea. Mm-hmm. Well, that's a that's a good point. Yeah, you know that yeah. fear, and it's and it's what I do and try to do the most is what I'm most afraid of, because by doing that, I'm like I was most afraid of losing people, so I lost two, lost two sons, mm-hmm. and yet I didn't lose them, mm-hmm. and yet I did. Mm-hmm. Right, you lost the physicality, the mortality, exactly. but you, but you but I gained never lost the wise spirit. beings right here, right? right? Right. But the beauty of that is by not acknowledging that death is any more than a celebration of a facet of our being, mm-hmm. and that's all it is. That's, that's all it is. That's all it is. We mm-hmm. can be so much fuller and younger. Mm-hmm. Our DNA is shifting and changing as we speak, and it's just. Mm-hmm. It's so empowering to be present. You That's have very to good. Yeah. I love this. Uh, I had quite a relationship with your sons that passed over on his yeah. yeah. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because yeah. So, it's well, so wonderful. When my oldest son was dying, he had chemo brain. So he, we were dealing with him like a person who had dementia. He was very mm-hmm. senior. But in the moment before he died, he said, look out. And where he was on, it was an Everett Hospital, and out beyond him was an inlet on the ocean with every tree's reflection was in this beautiful inlet. And he said, Look out and just see everything out that window and know that's all part of you are. You are so much more vast than you know that you are. Mm-hmm. Then when he got to the other side, uh, I said, So, Todd, because 
everything I was afraid of was just an illusion. A total illusion. Oh, it's so great. And he says, and actually, I was working through so many things that I just had a hard time accepting. He said, my problem was acceptance. Mm -hmm. And so that kept me in a state of fear because I didn't want to accept what was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's now, he says he's working on, they are creating a new planet. On the other side. Talk to us. Is that interesting? Oh he my said God. the only thing about this new planet is on a higher frequency. Mm -hmm. So the energy of the planet is a, a little higher level so that one would hope beings that go there have to have done some work. They have to be a state, uh, more of a state of, of, of oneness and continuity mm -hmm. with one another. Mm -hmm. So it's not like first, he says it's not like you're being judged. It means you working on you and in becoming more you allows you to elevate to that state. So mm -hmm. It's hard. He took me, remember I did that one thing at your, he took me to the other side mm -hmm. for a little brief mm -hmm. encounter mm -hmm. there. And he's like, I can only take you for a little short distance because you're not on the other side. Mm -hmm. But what was so amazing to me was the flowers had voices. Yes, they do. They, they were like on both sides of this, this luminous path that looked kind of like this. Mm -hmm. This path I was on, it was just this glittering light. And the flowers would reach up off their stems and they just had chords and songs. And so it was so beautiful because they were just like reaching, and you could feel their energy. One that another. makes so, total sense and to me. Do, yeah, doesn't it? And there was no end to the to the scenery. There was no there was no end to the horizon. It went on and on and on, mm -hmm. and everything was felt and heard. You know, I've often thought if we could, in a hypnotic state, even. Yes. Uh, create some kind of a near death experience. Yes. Which is kind of what yes. you do. You know, you're you're out of this mm -hmm. and you're in that. Mm -hmm. And uh, because as human beings, we have so much to learn. Exactly. No, let me rephrase that. As human beings, we have so much to remember. Mm -hmm. yes. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And accept experience. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. You know, I do feel as you're saying that you can't, you know. There's all intuitives. It's very hard to not go there. Mm -hmm. And I am seeing something, you know, it's, they're doing this thing right now with the children that see with their brain rather than their eyes. Yes, right? I know that. Right. Well, there's a part of they're going to be able to convey from the brain onto a screen. All right, what's there? And so people like you, Dorothy, and Sabone and myself, because we visit there all the time. Mm -hmm they'll be able to take that and project it. Wow. And what they're going to be able to do is allow a person an energetic experience. And I'm seeing that. And we have a choice of leaving and ascending that way mm -hmm. so that we can move with that. And it's, it's you know, I know my second son, the first thing he said on the other side was, I should pray we take you back to when he died, right? Mm -hmm. Because he made the choice to that. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't want to go on the ventilator again. He had had it. He had sepsis, c -dip, and um, his left nose were out of control. Yeah. And so he said, get the doctor because I don't want to do this. And so the doctor said, but you have one in a hundred chance of making it. He goes, yeah, right. <laughs> and so, but when the doctor, he, said, he left, he said, so do you really think you're right about the other side? I said, mm -hmm. So I told him about the light. I talked to him. I said, I'll tell you what, if I'm right, do me a favor. All right. Birds are the easiest things to, to come in. So just fly up and show me that, I, that everything was the way I said it was. Just show me that it was. And so when he got the other side, the doctor called me like, just as he was taking his last breath. He said he just took his last breath. Well, the first thing I heard him say was, it's pain-free here. There is no pain because mm -hmm. he was in so much. And then I watched, there's a white bird here. I know you've seen it, but a little brown on its tail. You know that little bird. I see this bird kind of cattywampus flying towards <laughs> the deck. Trying to get his wings. Trying, trying to figure out how to land on a landing. And finally, he hits the landing. I go, hi, Rick. He, 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 he looks right at me. Goes, and he falls into the bush next to the back <laughs> before he takes off again. I'm like, okay, got it. And now he comes as a red oriole. Whenever anyone in the family's here, he comes with that red oil. But he talks to me and 
You can all be. What does that happen when he talks to you? Is it, is it a sort you know, of it's kind of like this. this. Random or? If I just sit here and go, Todd, you hear, go, yeah, mom, what do you want? It comes right through the back of my head. Mm -hmm. It comes right through yes. here mm -hmm. like this. Mm -hmm. And if I, and I hear in his voice, actually, mm -hmm. I actually hear in his voice. And when Rick comes, I say, hey, Rick, and go, yeah, mom, they talk a little different. Mm -hmm. when they, mm -hmm. Is there vibration? And it's, it's their, their resonance is totally different. Mm -hmm. their, their resonance is, Todd is more full. Very expanded, mm -hmm. and Rick is more focused. So is that because of of the personality they had here, or is that where they are? Or what? it has to do with Todd's being, mm -hmm. quite frankly, mm -hmm. and Rick's being. Rick is a he gets everything done. He's precise. <clears throat> he, he works on things precisely, and so his energy is more precise. Where Todd is, Todd was very bright, and also Todd had a create a show called Northwestern Paranormal. And he would go into old buildings and record. He created a way to, on a cell phone to record voices, from ghost voices. Wow. And it was pretty cool. I The first place he went to was a saloon. It was an old saloon and closed for years. And so he said, Mom, help me out here. I said, okay, well, go out, drive in front of it, and I can give you some information. So when he drove in front, I said, in the front left was where the saloon was, and up above it's where the kids stayed. So they took toys in, they put toys up in the room, top story room, and then and they put a recorder up there, and then they went to where the old saloon was at one time, and they put a recorder there, and they left him there for an hour and went back, and he had sent me the recording, but I lost my Yahoo site that it was stored on, and that was before the cloud, years ago mm -hmm. and i lost that when i lost my yahoo mm -hmm. uh, email unfortunately so they took went back and they got the two recorders and upstairs there were little kids because they put toys up there and these little kids are like oh toys you don't know what the truth is and they need to hear little you voices and they heard them that actually one of the things that they had made noises and they heard the boy making a noise and then the other recording was a you know the old fashioned not the piano but the tang 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 tang. I could hear that in the background, and you could hear all the noise at the bar when people talking. So and interesting. Wow. And as yeah, and it was so he used to play these on his show. On this Northwest. Wow, that's right. Yeah. So he was into the paranormal. So Todd was more open minded than Rick was, and I think that has a lot to do with when I feel his energy is resonant. Is mm -hmm. mm -hmm. so what are the, what. Is it? The, are there things that they feel it's important to tell you? Yeah, as as a matter of fact, Rick said, please, 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 learn to monitor your thoughts, mm -hmm. because one of the most important things when you leave that body is if you're a constant thinker, every thought is exposed, and everyone knows it. It's all out here. Okay. So in consciousness, there's no hiding place. Yes. Wow. It's the hardest thing for me because I was an introvert. Mm -hmm. Was it everything I thought would, it would take you to those places? You think about where you were when you were six years wow. old, and boom, there you are when you were six years old at that it's like point. Of reference. Exactly. You go right to where you're thinking, wow. and everybody else hears it. And, and here's the other part we do that in human form. Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Yeah, we sure do. We sure do. And so he said, if I can make a suggestion, create space. In your thoughts, be more available in the moment, and stay out of the past. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what you're talking with the mystery. Exactly, mm -hmm. and that was one of the yeah the keys. One, hmm. you know, I, I remember years years ago reading a book called "Everybody Needs to Go on a Mental Diet." Oh, that's a I never heard that. But that's yeah. a really good Is statement. That, yeah, it was the founder of Unity Church. Oh, okay. Yeah, he okay. wrote this book about. We all need to go on a mental diet and create space in our thoughts because wow. thoughts are limiting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And we're, we're really conscious beings. Mm -hmm. And yet we've been trained to think things through. And the mind is a powerful tool if we in consciousness and our higher self is in command of it versus it's in command of us. Mm -hmm. You know, So that was one of the things. It's very God cautioned me on really focus meditation and meditational groups on on peace on the planet because there is really an internal war going on right now yes, for, is. for this planet mm -hmm. and the more people that can really focus on lifting the energy mm -hmm. on the planet um because there is a there is 
the factories that don't want it in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Remember years ago, when was it in the 60s or 70s when the, when the harmonic convergence 1987. happened? 87. 87? 88, 87. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the harmonic convergence changed some things. It shifted. It was, was shortly after that the Berlin Wall came down. That's right. 144,000 people. Why aren't we doing that again? Because it takes 144,000 people to do it. In other words, we have to have a gathering of 144,000 people that will sit for 48 right. hours. But and that's meditate. not that. I, I think we could do it. I, I do know we could do it. And it just means that we should do it for a long period of time. You can't just do an hour mm -hmm. of meditation. It means that we have to commit every day. Yes, we have to commit to doing it. Maybe and we can set up something. You like know, that. I think it'd be wonderful to set something up on here and have people join mm -hmm. and lift the, the energy of this planet. Because it's all, we were given free will. Yes. No one's going to rescue us. And that free will can be used for for protecting the planet, mm -hmm. for the children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's for the planet. We are very, 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 each of us are powerful beings. We connect with everything that ever was there and is or ever will be. And we're so, a part of all of it. That's exactly right. And I think it's critical right now to do a grouping that is because we have I, to I do something too. conspiracy theories are just running amok right yeah. now and oh. the only way to oh. move beyond it is to lift it yeah. resolve it exactly no don't give it a lot of attention yeah. rise above it that's above right it. i was just talking about this with another group that i'm involved with yes. in san diego at uc san diego <clears throat> and and we're talking about doing something like this but we talked about it, but we didn't get it off the ground. And I'm glad we're talking about it here. Yes. Yeah. You know, I really feel like it could be done in a way that would be so wonderful for people that they would lift their energy mm -hmm. and have lifting their energy mm -hmm. the key Absolutely. Lifting, you know, and I, I when I sit with people like Dorothy and Smart, to me, you you're just such lights in the world. What you're doing in the world is so profound, and it's it's multiply that by what you're doing in all 144,000 times. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's all it takes. It's 144,000 people to save the world. That's it. That's not that where, that, where does that number come from? The 12 tribes of Israel. Okay, yeah, yeah, 144,000. We've got 8 billion people on the planet. I think 144,000 is a minimum, minimal amount. Well, I, I believe that there's so many people that don't know what to do. They want to do something, but I they feel agree. so helpless. Mm -hmm. yes. And we need to give them something yes. to do. Exactly. Right away. I we're, agree. We're in it now. Mm -hmm. Right away. You know, I get this picture of going on and each contributing softly. Mm -hmm. The wonder and the beauty and the power of the being and the lifting of the energy and just something in a way that focuses them on on the positive. And this is such an amazing place because where I live in Palo Alto, where Dorothy lives and where you lived, we were on the grid. And now yes. with AI coming in and all of that energy, the softness is really like, what? Yes. So you come over here so and it's soft. curvy and it's voluptuous and it's rich and it's juicy and it's all the things mm -hmm. that we want to be in mm -hmm. order. Yeah in order to bring this shift. Yes. Because people have forgotten how to connect with that part of themselves or they don't have the permission to connect with that part of themselves. We need to give them something. Everybody needs to mm -hmm. show up for this. That, that want, that's We're calling on you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Any this, of your ideas. This is where it has to be because this is where you reach the world. Yes. And, and I think it takes a gathering of, of beings yeah. who really want to lift. Yep. You know what? And each one of us know a lot of people. Yeah. Yes. Who know a lot of people. And yes. everybody that's who, watching this has the same experience. That's exactly right. Because the audience we draw are already people that are conscious and are looking at this because they're, they're waiting for some answers or something, solution, something, guidance, yeah. something. Right. So we have to, mm -hmm. it's our job, really. Right. It's their job. It's your job out there. You know, maybe if you would write in and tell us what you feel, how we can do this. Exactly. How we can create this. I just, I love that we're on Kauai because it helps me remember here. 
Mm -hmm. You know, when you live on the grid and when you, I know, when you live on the grid, you live on the grid and there's all that money, power. Yeah, Um, but on the other hand, you are lifting the grid. And I really believe that enlightened, even semi-enlightened gods are supposed to be in places of need. I mean, I when I came here, because I'm such a mother of the world, mm-hmm. it's my nature to fix things. It's my nature to help. To love other things. Yes, yeah. very strong. So when I came here, I want to know who I would be if I had no one to fix. Say that again. I wanted to know who I would be if I had nobody to fix, to hear, to nurture, to get to know who am I. Yes. And I realized mm-hmm. in that process that so much of me is naturally mm-hmm. a fixer and mm-hmm. naturally a nurturer mm-hmm. and naturally mm-hmm. that I just mm-hmm. want to mm-hmm. do that. Mm-hmm. And so, but you, the other thing about you that has always struck me so well is that, that you have such a gift of seeing how people can be, mm-hmm. what where the blockages are, and just honing in on that with your intuition and knowing how to move them. That's such a powerful part of your work, I think. Don't you? The bigger picture of who they are. Mm-hmm. Well, I think you see them. Yes. There's so much yeah. we don't see ourselves. I Well, yeah, we don't see ourselves, but we see others so much clearer. Yeah. Well, ourselves. You, yeah, you do. And it's and it's and it's beautiful because they're each person is so sacred. Mm-hmm. And that's to lift them. I just had this wonderful conversation with a teacher who teaches media and he won awards for his websites. He, had, he made interactive websites back in the 70s. And I said, wow, what you could do to create a program for young people, high school kids, to get them out of bullying and into these wonderful places so they could do groups and interaction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And really, this is their world. And I know he's going to do a lot. And I was thinking about him when you were talking about <clears throat> creating something where we would have an esoteric room where people could experience a near death experience, right? You yeah. could do that. Mm-hmm. You could do that. He's, he's really gifted media wise. Yeah. He could do that. He's just busy, but he could do that. Because it's really, it, it's, the, it's the essence of the person is so incredibly sacred. That's one of the things you do too. I mean, my little, I, I see you as a little monk sometimes, Simone. Because you have a little monkey? No, monk. <laughs> you have this, a, no, because you're a powerhouse little girl. Excuse me, you might be a little in size, but you're a powerhouse in, in moving energy for people. Absolutely. Could you hand me that pen, please? I would be glad to. Thank you so much. And so the thing is that we all do this a little different, mm-hmm. but yet when you put it together, two or three are gathered mm-hmm. the energy moves mm-hmm. much faster and i do feel like something done on me to what you're doing here is very powerful doing the show on youtube because it can reach so many people and having that outlet of That's create, really cool. you know create some things that people can go into and experience mm-hmm. themselves and, the power of their reading is mm-hmm. so amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, when they get out of the idea that they're limited in any way. Yeah, you know, what you were saying before that thing, too, people, I think that people could, there's so much fear around death, this word death, right. and all this stuff. And if people, if we could take them into some kind of trance state where they could have one foot in the experience, you know, cross That's that. That's what I just wrote down. Over. Yeah. Absolutely. That's what I just wrote down. Oh, okay. Cool. So, Absolutely. you know, they, they go through the again. slit, they go through the slit right. for a moment yeah. and feel that peace. Right. And then be able to come back out exactly. again and remember that. Because how would their it, lives change? Well, ND, NDEs, they've done, they, they have a whole format of what they've come out with, with NDEs. Every person practically. Yeah, if you've ever read Anita Morjani's oh, yeah. book, Dying to Be Me, oh my they God. no longer fear life. Mm-hmm. They no longer fear death. Mm-hmm. All right, that that no longer exists. So, taking them into the death experience. When you're Todd, 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 oh, Todd, because he has no idea. I ask him, could we do that? He goes, sure, you could. So, what you would have to do is create the visual 
but you need to be very, very precise. That's absolutely. Because mm -hmm. most people are visual. They're more visual than they are auditory and kinesthetic. So create a visual so crystal clear of their letting go and feeling this explosion, like, like a cellular orgasm in their bodies. Just it's, That's what it's like. A cellular every, orgasm? Yes, every cell expands. When they leave their body, that's so it's like every cell in the body expands. Right. And so take them into, you take them into experience very detailed. And actually, that I'm imagining that their body is just expanding up a thousand miles around them. Make it as absolutely precise as you can. And then allow them to feel an experience that they would lift it like a balloon and every cell of their body just reached out and expanded thousands of miles around them because that's what happens when you go to the other side is that you expand. Yes. And yes. everything lifts. There's not a pain in any part of your body. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you go into luminous colors, lots of colors, lots of light, mm -hmm. lots of energy, and have it be a place where there is absolutely just love all around me. Mm -hmm. So so <clears throat> when you first leave this body, yes. I'm asking. Yes. When you first you 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 take your exit. Okay. So you leave the mortal behind. Yes. You go into the light, however that is. There must be a first step. Yeah, before you go into the light, you actually basically it's a he said it's like that letting go. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's this mm -hmm. massive Letting go. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, letting go. And when you let go, all right, all of a sudden your consciousness fills. Yes. So your consciousness now becomes the focus, not your mind, your emotions, your yes. body. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden in consciousness, you reconnect to all that you've ever been. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so you're in consciousness, and this is waiting for the light to look out. Okay. And there are usually, right. you see, there's usually someone who comes, there's a guide mm -hmm. that comes. Mm -hmm. And as a guide that you know, you know as well as your hand, there's a guide and there was an illuminous path and light. But what he said, here's what he's telling me. Whatever your belief system yes. is, is where you're going to go. If you believe right. your thoughts, if you are East Indian and you believe that you're East Indian, you'll be the East Indian guides. You'll be in a place of East Indians. So remember that your belief system is what carries you. Mm -hmm. And that's why some of the NDEs write about it's not positive for them because they have terror belief systems. Mm -hmm. no. So the bigger your belief system is, the more vast the experience. Okay, so the bigger the belief the system, the more, more vast. Open, yeah. The more open ended the belief system, <laughs> the more vast your experience is. Mm -hmm. And each individual has a completely different experience of it, yes. even though mm -hmm. in all experience is freedom. Mm -hmm. All experience is so freeing, mm -hmm. even though it might be unique to that being, it still contains the freedom of consciousness. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. So if, so if we can create that in a meditative state, and we don't want them to continue <laughs> without keep us. Keep the silver and keep a groundedness in the body. Okay. So they better really to focus on a groundedness in the body first. Or you surge off with the silver cord flowing. Okay, that's good. Connect to the silver cord. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah. Make sure that what? there's a silver cord that attaches to a bigger this. you yeah. to this physical mm -hmm. form. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, when you're going to bed at night and you're laying there, you go like this. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What that is, is you're leaving and going to consciousness. Mm -hmm. But when you come back and you're waking up, it's so fast. It makes that you jump. Yeah. Back yeah. in your body. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a silver cord that attaches you to you. So at night, you go drifting off in consciousness all over, but you're still attached by that cord. Yes. So in order to have that experience, you still need to stay attached to the cord. So that can be. The cord is what so that's, part, that, the cord. that's part of the. Um, imagery yeah and so he's saying take allow a person to see themselves in their chakra system coming up and through the crown oh that's nice and have them come out the top through the crown and do a gold light or a white light mm -hmm. gold because gold protects and white is expansion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and have them go out and know that the silver cord is still all totally attached to their body so they're completely safe to soar in the cosmos 
and make it very detailed, very specific because they don't know what they're supposed to experience there is what I'm saying. So and that's the beautiful part of it. You there's the mystery. There's, there's the mystery. You took the words right away. And book. he said, call in the guides, call in your guides to assist them in having an experience. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, you have no idea what's going through my no, mind. I, I think I do. Yeah. <laughs> Same one that's going through yours. Yeah. yeah. And it's and it's really um when Todd took me that one time to the other side, it was very experiential. It's hard to describe it because the colors. There are there are words. In it, there aren't words. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't want to come back. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go in that big white luminous building. <laughs> mm -hmm. I did, but he said, you can't go there. Don't go there. Can't go there. But if you do, look my name up and come back and tell me something. Well, well, you can't go there. I go there. Uh, well, we go there from me here. Oh, yeah, right. But when but I was out of my out. gosh, totally. He said, okay, you can go and you're looking at it from here. But right now, those the people have left their bodies, their classrooms and everything in there. But he said, you can bring it to you. Yeah. He said, you can take the record and bring them to you. Yeah. Which is what you do all the time reading. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. We can bring it to you. Mm -hmm. But he says, you can only go so far. You can only go so easy. I can only take you so far. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go back. Mm -hmm. Yes, because that makes, not, that makes sense. Because you're not sure leaving yeah. your body yet. That's right. 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 Um, and it's safe. You know, right. you know, the most important thing, safe. Safe. It's completely safe to do that. And, you know, there's a there's a lot that's going to be going on in the next few years mm -hmm. in our DNA that is going to open us to that. Right now, one of the things that's going on this year, I keep thinking is our DNA is shifting big time. Yes. And that's one of the reasons why everything is so exaggerated. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And so the power of that is going to be miraculous in healing the bodies and the minds and the emotions and, and allowing us to do more than we've ever been able to do while being in this physical body. And it's opening us up to crossing through the dimensions mm -hmm. more easily, much more easily. I, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, are your sons in a certain dimension? They're kind of in two different ones, mm -hmm. actually, on the other side. Mm -hmm. Todd is, Rick is a worker bee, kind of. He's really working on energies and moving energies. Mm -hmm. Todd is way out there. Todd is. Is he above the fifth, or where is he? Oh, he's on another galaxy, okay. making a planet that we can He's making a planet. Mm -hmm. He's okay. working on creating a planet. I know. I when I feel it. him, I, I he feels me. But I can just go tired and go, yeah, mom. Like, it's instant. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know? And look at all these little kind of like are either one of them in the fourth or the fifth dimension? No, because there's so much there's so much talk about that. Well the fourth dimension is kind of where the astral That's plane the astral. Is. I wouldn't want and the that. Act, we go across we cross through the astral plane at night. Uh, when we go to sleep and we're coming back, and that's where the boogeyman was. Well, I know that um, <laughs> Drunvalo Melchizedek talks a lot about the fifth dimension, yes. and my husband's really into, oh, I want to go to the fifth dimension. I yeah. love that. You're 40 feet tall and all this stuff. I'm like, what? <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I'm just... Yeah, they, I know one guy said, I've never been this big. I am so big. A friend of ours, he died, said, I have never been this big. I am so big. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. All right, you're big. <laughs> it's okay with me. You're That's big. Right. You can be big. <laughs> well, actually, you know, you can go into theta. You don't even have to. The sixth dimension is where the universal laws are. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's very squiggly, like moving through jello. Oh, all right. I think I'd like to know. And the universal laws are there. And you can feel it. But when you move out beyond that sixth dimension, you go into theta. And theta is light. And what are you saying? Theta? Yeah. Theta. 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 Yeah. Theta. Yeah. Theta. Theta. Yeah. theta is where you can really start to heal things. That's so beautiful. Go to Theta on the, on, I'm doing I on think Gary. I do. I, I feel I do at night. Yeah. Go on Theta. Yeah, yeah. When you go up, yeah, when I, I, I kind of take myself That's up through the fourth dimension, and the fifth feels kind of pinkish. Mm -hmm. And then when the sixth feels is that mm -hmm. yellow, mm -hmm. kind of scribbling through. <laughs> and then uh, reach out to seven. I just it's like phew, you know. Like, I've never heard that, that. I've never heard that phrase before. Which phrase? The, the theta dimension. Mm -hmm. You know, I got where I learned that one was theta healing with uh, 
Right. She, what's her name? Yvonne Stibble, uh, who teaches it. Yeah. And the first time I, I learned how to do that, I what I noticed was a complete mm -hmm. freeing mm -hmm. when I hit the fader, we hit the deepest unconscious. That's right. Yeah. Right. So usually we're not conscious to hit theta. Yeah. But if you do it intent with intent, intentionally go there, yeah. you are conscious. Yes. Well, and that's where you the can... theta, the theta brainwave pattern with our brains is the same brainwave pattern that we utilize when we're dreaming. Right. So so it's interesting to me right. to 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 look you, at that from a, another point of view. Mm -hmm. You can go there consciously and <clears throat> that's all kinds true. of things mm -hmm. there. But that feeling doesn't always stay, it's fluctuating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think you fluctuate the data quite a point. Yes, right. If you, really do. if you had something, a message from Hawaii, because you're so, you so become, what? Sweet love. A if message you from so Kauai. become Hawaii, to me, you embody that essence so beautifully. What do you want to tell people right now from from this space and this spaciousness, this vastness inside of yourself that you found here? Because you've really found it here. Well, you know, I each person was chosen to be here. I I this. really believe that every single soul on this planet right now is a gift to this planet by being exactly, precisely who they are. Mm -hmm. So lessons you know, everywhere. Uh, absolutely, but every Every obstacle, what I have learned is every obstacle has a gift in it. Mm -hmm. And if you can allow that obstacle to show you the gift, mm -hmm. then you can start looking at the gift. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the mystery of that gift That's is right. the power. Yeah. Don't mm -hmm. figure it out. Mm -hmm. Just graciously accept it. Mm -hmm. So one thing I've learned here is the, the art of appreciation and gratitude for being here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that each moment is a gift mm -hmm. and by being present i can be in the gift of life and not in the figuring out of life and not measuring myself by anything mm -hmm. out there mm -hmm. and so Kauai, is there something about the pace here and the essence it, here that's what well kawaii lash you with the senses the, the sweet air that you're breathing the warm ocean the earth it, it, everything it pushes your emotions up to be dealt with here. It mm -hmm. releases emotions here. So it's a powerful place for healing. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. But you're surrounded with so much beauty mm -hmm. that you cannot not see yourself as part of that beauty. Right. There's the oneness. And yeah. that you're, it, you're just connected to everything here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely every, every Because I'm connected to everything in California too. But from here, it's easier. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely easier. And it's more feminine. And I think that people should come here and not go running around like squirrels, seeing a zillion things, and instead be present mm -hmm. in the moment mm -hmm. and be here, just be present. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't, wouldn't you say that sometimes coming to, to Kauai, in this particular instance, when we get that when we're here, when we experience it when we're here, then we know how to experience it. Yeah, and you take it with you. And you take it with That's you. That's right. Years and years and years ago, I used to be in real estate. And what I did in real estate, besides selling houses, was fix everybody in the house, in, their, in the family's lives. <laughs> so I got enmeshed in the whole family. Mm -hmm. And when I would have those moments, because sales is a is a career that is so up and down yeah. and emotionally, you know, I learned so much there. It was so powerful. But whenever I got stuck, I came to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And by being in Hawaii and just spending a week here, mm -hmm. I would go back with a completely yes. different mm -hmm. consciousness mm -hmm. that I would take back to California. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I, I love California. I love the people of California. I love the intelligence of California. I love the essence of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's powerful. The essence is very powerful. And I don't have to wear clothes. I can wear all these loose things that I just yeah, I love it. <laughs> water. I mean, yeah. I love water. You're just it's flowing water. like crazy. Right. And so what I would say to each person is spend time loving you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love yourself. You are the greatest gift you'll ever give to life. Love who you are as who you are, not as who you think you should be. Mm -hmm. 
You know, it's that's, so yeah, powerful. Yeah, that's profound. Because love to me is the only one thing else I want. Yep. Love is the only reality. Mm -hmm. Yep. Everything else is an illusion. Mm -hmm. And that taught to the record really helped me out with that one. Mm -hmm. That most of what you're you're spending your time on is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, oh yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. 99%. Yep. And so being here, you feel more loving towards everything and everyone. People let you in, they're courteous on the road. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's slow it's, and it, because the pace is so and I am a fifth year type A personality even though I'm highly intuitive so for me at first I I, I had to really slow myself down mm -hmm. I did yeah. and I feel myself revved up when I'm around my people from California I can just feel my so I had to slow down but I can now move so, I can just I can sit for hours. Mm -hmm. so let's toast to that. Yeah. <laughs> the beauty of being. Oh, I'll Thank drink you. to that. Thank you. And to the mystery. And to the mystery. And to the mystery. I love that too. And thanks so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you. And for every having day, me. every moment, I That's carry great. you in my heart. Thank you for having me. It was just a joy. And yeah. for those of you that want to uh, order her book, which is called fanventurini.com. It's right on me, just click right. on it. But also, what's the name of your book? It's name? The Power of Waking Up My Path to Truth and Soul. Okay, I Love highly that. recommend it. And if you wanted to have a session with Jan, you can call oh. her and you'll find it on, your, on her website. But I do do meditations for people. Well, I do sessions. I do meditations for people and they record them on their iPhones. Right. Mm -hmm. you do that.